CBT, Interpersonal Effectiveness 5. In this session, we're going to look at how we can end relationships and in doing so, how we can walk the middle path. So thinking in dialectics. Ending destructive relationships and those which interfere with pursuing important goals can sometimes be more difficult than forming relationships in the first place. All relationships, whether it's friendships, partnerships, parent-child relationships, siblings, work relationships or therapy relationships can all vary in the extent to which they enhance or reduce the quality of our lives. Even in a good relationship, it's common to have fleeting wishes for it to end, maybe when we're angry, unhappy or frustrated, especially when we're in emotional mind, although these often pass. However, some people end relationships in emotional mind, which causes problems. When we're highly emotional, our behaviour is mood dependent and our ability to think clearly, communicate effectively or problem solve issues is limited. We become judgmental, which often causes even more conflict. Before walking out or ending the relationship, it might be an idea to write down the pros and cons of staying versus ending the relationship before making any rash decisions. You might need to use your distress tolerance skills, for example stop or tip, before doing this in order to find wise mind. So let's talk about destructive relationships. What is a destructive relationship? Well, a relationship is destructive when it destroys aspects of yourself, such as your self-esteem, your safety, your integrity or your happiness. It's also destructive when it interferes with your quality of life, your ability to enjoy life, pursue your goals or enjoy relationships with others. For example, when a partner is very jealous or resentful of another person. When the cost of leaving is greater than the cost of staying, it would be important to stay in that relationship. For example, if your partner suffers a brain injury and completely changes in personality and behaviour, unable to recognise you and is angry and unable to care for themselves, you might stay because it's in your values to do so, and leaving may result in intense guilt and remorse. But it would also be important to maintain your quality of life by gaining regular breaks. The guilt of ending a relationship may be justified or unjustified. Justified guilt would be feeling guilty when our values have been violated. An unjustified guilt would be feeling guilty when we're still living within our values, often occurring when we're paying attention to what others are thinking over ourselves. When the relationship is important and there's reason for hope of improvement, problem solving may be effective in repairing it. It may take a lot of effort and work on both parts, and sometimes you might need to seek help from others, whether that be a marriage counsellor, relatives or a support group. When planning how to end a destructive relationship, it's important that we cope ahead. The first step in doing this would involve deciding whether to end the relationship in writing, on the phone or in person. This will depend on the type of relationship, how long you've known the person and the degree of intimacy with them as well. It might be a good idea to write a script in advance. So think about exactly what you want to say and how you want to explain your decision. If you're writing it down, perhaps a resignation letter for example, ask a trusted friend to read it first. It's easy for judgmental or insensitive comments to creep into your writing without you noticing. Another thing to help you cope ahead is practicing what to say. If you're ending the relationship over the phone or in person, practice what you'll say and how you're going to say it, in a mirror or with close friends in order to get feedback on what you say. You'll also want to troubleshoot ahead of time what you'll do or say in response to how the other person may react. Try to predict what they'll say and do, and prepare a range of responses. You could use your dear man give and fast skills to guide your conversation. If we think about dear man first, so you could be direct and clear. Describe the relationship problems that have led you to wanting to end the relationship. Express clearly how you feel about it. Assert that you want to end the relationship. Have the other person confirm his or her understanding that the relationship is over. Reinforce, if possible, how ending it would be good for both of you. Stay mindful and appear confident. If you're sure that ending the relationship is in your best interest, it's important not to give in to persuasion to stay in it, especially if you're more important to them than they are to you. Be careful not to go to extremes unless you really do want to end all contact with the person. If you're getting a divorce or moving out of a house share, you may still want to be friends, so don't burn your bridges. Be willing to negotiate whether to end the relationship 
or how to end it with the other person. Using give would involve being gentle. Don't attack, threaten, make judgments or be condescending. This can be really difficult when you blame the other person for the end of the relationship. Even if you've already made your mind up, act interested and listen to what the other person has to say. Validate their point of view, feelings and wishes and use an easy manner to make the whole situation a lot easier and less painful with a reduced chance you'll hurt the other person. Your fast skill would involve being fair, so be tactful about how you frame your conversation. Don't make any apologies, but validate how they feel. Stick to your values and be truthful about what the problems are, even if it's because you've changed rather than because of the other person. It's important to note that even though you may be ending a relationship because it interferes with your life goals or is destructive, you may still love the person. You may have different values, career demands or live in different locations or many other reasons for ending the relationship rather than a lack of love, which may still remain. If loving the person enhances your life, great. If it damages your life, you need to end the relationship. However, to keep from returning to the destructive relationship, you may need to practice opposite action if you still love them. Always keep yourself safe. If you're trying to end a physically abusive relationship or one where you fear for your life, you need to get appropriate advice about how to leave the relationship safely, as it is quite dangerous. Get a plan for doing it safely and where to go afterwards. Ask for help from helplines or professionals with training in abusive relationships. In the next section, we're going to talk about walking the middle path, so thinking in dialectics. The middle path is all about balancing opposites, accepting reality but also working to change reality, validating ourselves and others, but also pointing out errors. It allows us to think in extremes, but teaches us to return to balanced thinking. The basis of dialectics is that everything exists in opposites. Dialectics teaches us that opposing points of view can both be true. Therefore, we can find a balance of both and move forward rather than remaining stuck. We are also constantly changing and may need to radically accept changes in ourselves or others to be more flexible in relationships. Change is transactional. We're influenced by our relationships, but we also influence them in return. This is not to place blame, but we all exist within a system or network, a bit like the solar system. So how do we think dialectically? We need to look for both sides and find wise mind. We need to find the truth in both sides by checking the facts. Each person has a different point of view and these differences should be accepted, not judged. We need to move away from extremes or all or nothing thinking. We need to balance the opposites by accepting reality but also working to change it, validating ourselves and others. Find your meaning in the pain. Make lemonade out of lemons. Turn problems into assets. For example, struggles are an opportunity to practice skills, grow stronger and develop empathy. Always treat others how you wish to be treated. If you're harsh, critical or invalidating, you're likely to be treated in the same way. We need to try to embrace change. Radically accept it when others change, perhaps. Always observe the effects of what you say and do on others. Also observe how others' moods affect you. And the last point is to let go of blame. Always be non-judgmental. <laughs>